uh, I am going to talk about conviction voting, which is um, another way uh, in which we can um, make uh, the conviction on a vote count. And it has no relation with quadratic voting previously. Uh, we'll see first what uh, commons are and what um, Eleonor Ostrom was talking uh, about the commons. Uh, we'll see in deep in depth uh, conviction voting and we'll see a demo on uh, an application uh, of conviction voting in uh, an Aragon DAO. We also will see the maths behind uh, all that uh, model and see a brief uh, overview of what common stack is. So first of all, uh, do you know what uh, commons is? Uh, have, have you ever uh, heard about uh, governing the commons or, or something like that? Or is it the first time that you hear about, about this word? Uh, commons are uh, natural resources or, culture or cultural resources, or sometimes they are even physical things that uh, a community uh, possess and takes care of. And these three um, definitions are from Wikipedia, actually. Uh, of course, there are informal norms that uh, a community have on, for example, how we should treat uh, a, a natural park or Sometimes they even are laws that are governed by states, right? But we not normally have social um, rules that prevent us from uh, being rogue with um, the places that we live in. And also a very interesting part is that it's a way in which we can govern something that doesn't intervene a market or a state. And I will come with that idea later on. So um, have you heard about the tragedy of the commons? It is the most common thing that you, ha you, you uh, hear about the commons, that they usually end very bad. Uh, that, that guy, Garrett Hardin, uh, popularized a story about uh, a field in which cows were uh, eating. And the farmers uh, were a community, uh, and uh, some, of the, uh, some of them uh, thought that if they have more, co more cows, uh, they are going to earn more money. And the thing is that it is better for the farmer to have one cow more, but it is worse for the whole community because it is worse for the ground. Because if there are so much cows, then the uh, field exhausts, right? And this is called commonly the, the tragedy of the commons, that if we don't have uh, some laws, uh, from a state, or we make pay people and we have that market, we cannot go uh, very well, uh, something that it's from everyone. But uh, Eleanor Ostrom uh, did a lot of uh, research uh, um, along her life about communities that actually uh, takes care of natural resources and does it well. So we can say that in many commons, uh, if they are not managed well, tragedy mm -hmm. of the commons is, is a thing. Uh, they actually uh, disappear or uh, there are free riders that uh, get a lot of benefit from them, but at the end, the community dismantles. 
But if they follow a certain set of rules, which are the eight principles of Ostrom, we can uh, govern a, a commons without a state and without a, a market. And which are the rules? The first rule is that a commons must be bounded. Uh, so you have to know who is inside the community and who, has, who is outside. And of course, communities can be uh, very open. But at the same time, the people who is inside must follow those social uh, norms. And this, that can be uh, at the same time informal. But we need to know uh, who, can, who is taking care of the commons and who is not. A second principle is that the there is not one solution for every community. Each community has its own, its own properties, so also it needs uh, its own solutions. So we cannot do a technology that, or, a, or have ideas that works for everything. We need to focus on uh, the local uh, area and see what is better for, for that area. A third princip principle is that people in that area must have a say in, in what is going on. If people is not involved in the commons, the commons actually go very wrong. Another one is that if you have a commons, but at the same time you have a state in top of you, and you're the, the community in uh, decisions are not um, are not recognized by the state and the state or whatever it is in in, in top of you uh, you are doomed also another principle is that uh, we have to monitor what is happening in your commons uh, it is not uh, right to be a good person in some way, uh, managing well the commons, but not um, taking care or, of what others are doing to it. And of course, if there are uh, infractions of the rules in the community, we have to apply sanctions. Um, we have to apply sanctions, and they uh, should be graduated, like. If somebody just uh, eats the last uh, piece of cake, don't kick uh, him off. I mean, uh, you have to to graduate the um, the sanction. But it is very important for the people to protect the commons and to say uh, as soon as possible, that's enough. Uh, you are being ego egoistic, uh, uh, you should uh, behave in a different way. And everybody should be uh, in that mindset. And resolution should be, uh, the, the conflict should be that easy. Uh, I mean, conflict in a commons is something good if it's taken uh, in a f first place and not let uh, to the when it is impossible to live with a, with a, with a person, right? As soon as as sooner we rise a conflict, the, be the better. And also, of course, uh, if we have, as I said, we need uh, little communities uh, that are self-managed and those little communities uh, can be inside of bigger communities, but at the same time, they must be uh, um, self-managed. We, we cannot have a national commons because people, then it's, it's not uh, self, um, they, they have no sovereignty over the things that they are uh, doing with their, their lives. So is this part, uh, every, everyone is uh, following the, okay. So 
what conviction voting is. Uh, it is a way in which people can sign signal um, which are their preferences. And it is not like, it's, it's like a vote, and votes are actually uh, people signaling preferences, but it's a continuous signal in which it's more like how nature uh, works. Because if you are in a, um, if you think of a forest, uh, there are obviously no uh, master tree that says, prepare for the, for the winter, because now it's time to low down uh, and um, wait for the, for the spring, right? There is not that. Um, trees are connected between them uh, using uh, chemicals, and they sense in some way what is going on, which is the level of, of the humidity, all that, all that stuff. I mean, nature is a decentralized system, and they help each other. So why don't we do that in our democracies? Uh, instead of voting one time each four years, why don't we, uh, in some way, signal every day? And as in nature, uh, how uh, this type of chemicals work, or in the case of humans, the or hormones and lot of lots of interesting uh, things in nature are continuous and they grow over time. It's not like now, and I vote, and that's, that's all. No, it's, it's like things grow over time, OK? So we have that. We have that voting power that accumulates over time. Uh, in in a, a normal voting, we have that every vote counts as one. Uh, and when it is inside the box, you cannot change it, right? Also, there is a very defined time frame. I mean, the day of the votation is uh, 70 of, uh, 17th of uh, January, and that's the only moment that you can have a say. Uh, on 18th, you don't. And also, there are some kind of consensus, which is normally relative majority or something like that. In conviction voting, we have very different things. We have that the voting is continuous. You are voting every day. Uh, you can change your vote at any moment. And it grows stronger over time. And the proposals. Uh, are there when you uh, put them. Uh, there is no, not a good moment to, to vote. It's just you can vote anytime to the proposal. And it offers some interesting properties, such as um, because in many DAO votations, uh, are you familiar with DAOs, right? I mean, uh, decentralized communities over the blockchain. The, there is that problem that at the last moment, uh, people vote and they change the, the result of the votation. And it is something that it's, mm, it doesn't work very well with conviction voting. And that's, that's mm, good. Because uh, in order to execute your vote, you have to wait a little bit. So uh, it, it is like that signaling that you cannot uh, surprise anybody in the last minute. And also buying votes is very, I mean, you cannot buy a boat. You, you only can rent a boat, which is a lot more expensive. And this is how uh, conviction uh, on a boat grows. Uh, and also the formula. But I will go with, with the, this first. If we are in day zero and you 
stake uh, some of your um, credit. Um, let's, let's talk about staking tokens. You stake them. Uh, so you are voting on a proposal. Day one, you have this amount of conviction. Day two, uh, or sorry, day four, you have this amount. And your conviction is growing over time, OK? Until a certain point. And when you uh, decide that you don't want to uh, support more of that proposal, conviction is also um, decaying slowly in the same, in the same way. And this is actually the, the formula. Basically, uh, your conviction today is your conviction yesterday, uh, but with uh, 90, only, percent, uh, only a 90% of the conviction yesterday plus the conviction you are adding today. That's, that's, the, that's the idea. You take what you had yesterday, you apply a 90%, and you add a new conviction today. So if today you are not adding any, any conviction, it's the 90% of yesterday and the 90% of yesterday, and, and so on and so on. OK? We, we understand that part, right? This means you don't vote or you vote against? No. Uh, you just stop voting here, and you have your uh, stake to vote on another proposal. OK? Meanwhile, you are voting. You cannot, on a, you, you cannot vote on another proposal. So in some way, uh, if you are convinced on that is the correct thing to do, you should uh, keep voting on that. But if in some point your conviction doesn't reach uh, cert a certain threshold which is needed to, for your, the proposal to pass, then it has no sense. People is not following you. So maybe it is better for you to do something else with your voting power, right? So it, it doesn't decrease uh, immediately. But meanwhile, you are decreasing your uh, the conviction is decreasing in, in, a, in this proposal. Maybe in another proposal, is increasing again. Until here, you are it, you are following, right? So one thing, so that the sum of your your of your conviction in different proposals is the sum is the same, always. Yes. Did you just share your, your amount between the proposals? Yes. In the current implementation, you can only uh, give full support to one proposal with all your tokens. But uh, in, the, in the future, we can split your tokens so you can um, support many proposals, mm -hmm. but only uh, with this amount of the, the amount that they uh, allow you, which is, is not very efficient. It is better to. Uh, go for one, and when it passes, go for another. Or at least it's not efficient until we apply something else that we are going to talk about later. OK. So these are the different people voting on something. And this is the, the sum of all of them. So actually, this is the one. Uh, conviction that counts, the sum of all the people who is staking on that, on that uh, proposal. And it is as easy as add them. Uh, so it's very interesting for uh, implementing them in a, in a software, because it's very easy. <coughs> and then there is that threshold that I was talking about in which you need uh, to define a certain point of conviction in which you are going to allow a proposal to pass. Normally, uh, we are talking about uh, funds. I mean, we have a certain amount of funds. And we want to spend uh, some of them in one proposal. So for the vote to pass, we need to reach that threshold, which is T. And it is proportional to the total supply of, uh, of tokens that people is staking. 
and a row parameter, which is just uh, something that it's used to tweak the formula. And the divider here is about the requested funds and the uh, total funds. So here we have the um, percentage of funds that are requested to the pool of, of funding. And this parameter here, beta, it's the maximum amount of funds that you can request. OK? So you can see the graph here. Uh, if beta is 0, 2, you can only re you can not request uh, something that is much more than the 80 percent of the funds that are currently in the pool, okay? And actually, how much uh, if if the if you if you are requesting something that is around this 20 percent, you are going to need a lot of conviction. So. Um, Probably this graph is not the best one to explain that. And probably the formula is not the best one. Uh, we may change it in, in the following weeks. But the, the idea is that uh, the formula is something like the more funds that you are asking, the more conviction you need. You need. So you can request only for uh, 100 euros in a pool of thousands of them. And it should be more, much more easy to ask for them than asking 1,000. Okay, that's that's the idea of the threshold formula. And it's time for a demo. Uh, this is the application that uh, we have built in Aragon. So this is. Let me check it. This is an Aragon DAO. And these are the tokens that are used for staking. So we are going to add uh, 15,000 tokens to another account. And as we see, it is going to appear two uh, Ethereum accounts that have 1,500 uh, tokens, okay? So they have the same um, amount of tokens to stake and to vote. Here they appeared, okay? And now we go to the conviction voting application, which is the, the thing that we have done. And we see three proposals here and 500 uh, dice, which are um, money. And each of the proposals, let me. One moment. Each of the proposals are asking for some money, okay? And we just uh, si signaled that we want to do conviction voting, we, and it is going to pass because, as you see, it is the conviction is going to grow in the in, in the future, and we see the future approaching, and this is the threshold. Also, we can see it here. Right now, we have a 5% of the conviction, and only a, an 11% is needed because the threshold is low in this case because we are only asking for 1,000 dice of 15,000. And it is going to pass. In Actually, it should already have passed, but it passed. So we go to execute the proposal, and now, if we had uh, 15,000, now we are going to have 14,000. Here it is, and the proposal disappeared. And now we are going to vote on that one. The, I don't know which one they are going to vote. Probably the, the top one. Yes, we are voting on the top one. We are going to change the. It, it, it is not going to pass, okay? Because uh, we require so many percent of conviction, and the thing is that 
on, with only one pe person who is staking on that, it's not going to pass either. Because your conviction, yeah, even if you are waiting for the, ev e e forever, uh, your conviction is not enough. So you need both people uh, staking on that. And this is the sum of both uh, convictions. And this is your conviction, the, uh, the account that is connected at the moment, and this is the sum of uh, all the people who is staking on that proposal, and it's going to pass, of course. If you go to another one and you want to stake on the, on the other one, you cannot. You have to withdraw your, your support from the one that you are staking on, as what is it, it doing now. And later on, well, as you can see, now the, the support is, is not anymore there. It's going to decrease. Your, this is your conviction. And now we are staking on that other proposal. You are following along, right? right? Well, it is going to be uh, to, to repeat again. So now this proposal that was not going to pass because it needed uh, at least this amount of tokens it is going to, to pass because uh, we are staking uh, 5,000 uh, tokens here, and it's going to pass in 30 seconds. Also, you, you can see here which is the proposal that you are supporting. And uh, as you can see, the, the thresholds are uh, Adapted to the amount of, of funding, the funding requested, and the amount of tokens. Now, when it's passing, this threshold of 61% is going to be a lot much more because we will only have um, 13,000 uh, dice to spend. So now we execute that. And when it's executed, that 61% is going to be much more. Of course, it costs uh, 15 seconds per block. Now the threshold is 94%. So we need all the community uh, on that proposal in order to, uh, to pass that. OK? So is there any question for that uh, part? You're okay? Okay. So we are going to dip a bit more into the maths of it. But don't worry, because I'm going to explain everything quite well. Okay. Uh, the thing is that how can we calculate which is the 100% of, of, the, of the conviction? And how will we need, because as you see, this is a bar that indicates how much conviction you are going to have with your current vote. How can we know uh, the future? We can take the conviction formula and make a limit when time is infinite. And we can obtain that other formula, which is actually much simpler. simpler. And this allows us to know how much conviction is 100% and how much conviction uh, is the one that you are going to get. Also, uh, as you saw before, when you don't have enough tokens, it also says you need at least uh, 1,000 tokens. How do we get that? We get that, that formula, which is over here, and we um, isolate the x, which represents the tokens. And other formulas. H 
how do we know how much time is it going to, to, to cost until we arrive to the threshold? Uh, we have that formula again, and we have to isolate the time, uh, knowing which uh, conviction do, do, we have to, to, do we have to reach. So knowing that, uh, and isolating the time, doing some magic with Wolfram Alpha, which is a pretty good uh, tool, online tool, we obtain that formula, which is uh, so crazy. But fortunately, uh, the only non-complex number uh, of it is just that. So we do a logarithm of uh, this thing, and we have the time pretty well. And also, the problem with solidity and all the problems that it carries. Uh, maybe you know that in solidity you only have uh, integers and you don't have any kind of uh, way to deal with decimals. So we have to do some single point uh, or fixed point, point arithmetics, which is pretty uh, cool actually. When you want to sum two decimals, you have to multiply each of them by a scaling factor and later on divide them by that scaling factor. So we obtain um, a number that it's, it's correct. Okay? Also, when you want to multiply them, you have to divide two times by that scaling factor. And when you want to round, uh, because if you add there a 0, 0,5, you can round that, the, the numbers. So this is the way in which we can uh, work with whole numbers in a system that only accepts whole numbers. We can uh, work with decimal numbers in a system that, uh, that only accepts whole numbers. Do, do you get that? So what do we need to this formula? Is to multiply them um, by this scaling factor, adding them over, over and over. And later on, this uh, alpha is also a decimal. So we multiply it by another scaling factor which it, in this case is uh, 10. And that works pretty well. It approximates pretty well the, the formula. And in order to do that, this is a, a sample of the code that we use for the conviction formula in solidity. We use um, a power formula that uses squaring um, squaring exponents, which is a very efficient way to, to do this kind of maths. And something similar we do for the threshold formula, in which beta is uh, and weight are decimals. So we change them. Uh, we apply a scaling factors there. So doing all that we get that other formula that has no decimals in it. And the way that we do uh, solidity formula is like this. And of course, it, it, it was working as you, you saw, but it has some, yet some, some drawbacks. First of all, is that the staking tokens that you have uh, cannot be transferred. They must be um, kind of reputation tokens or, so, or, or something at the moment. And we are trying to solve it by doing semi-transferable tokens, which is uh, something that it's a work in progress by Autark, which is an Aragon uh, startup. Also, the growth, as you say, so is so fast. Uh, it's 15 seconds here. It's, it's super cool for, for demoing, actually. But it's 15 seconds here, should be one day. So you see how uh, conviction increases day by day, not 15 seconds by 15 seconds. Also, as, as I commented, threshold formula should be changed. 
uh, because it should be like more, a bit more smooth. And we can only signal one proposal, which would be very cool to have many of them, right? And we come in with that idea uh, of maybe it's better to signal many proposals at, at the same time, uh, but it's not efficient, as I said at the beginning, uh, because it's better um, theoretically to just focus on one, and when it passes, focus on the next one. But if we apply quadratic voting, maybe we can um, do it better. So it is better for to support all the proposals that you want to support, because it is better for, for everyone. And also we can apply uh, support against. I mean, at the moment it's, it's like you can only support or not support, and the default is not supporting. But if somebody wants to build a crazy thing with uh, the money of the DAO, maybe you should be uh, show ac active resistance against, against that, right? So maybe it's one thing that we will add in the future. You have a lot of resources uh, that uh, are in the Meetup page. And I am going to talk also about, it is just one mo module in Common Stack, this conviction voting here. But we have a lot uh, more going on. And as I said at the beginning, each community needs I its own tools. And we don't want to provide a, only one uh, solution for everyone. We need modular components that work well with each other uh, so communities can choose the ones that they want to uh, work with. So of course, we also have quadratic voting, quadratic voting here and many other ways to, to govern the communities. Uh, there are many ways to propose there are many ways to fund the communities and to analyze if everything is going well. Also, uh, we have CatCat, which is a software that allows us to uh, simulate what people is going to do with the, the tools that uh, are provided. And one of the tools that we are providing is that augmented bonding curve. Actually, we, are, we only provide, uh, I, I should be clear with that, Common Stack is only designing the, the components, and that implementation is done in an Aragon startup that it's called OneHive. I am doing, I, I am in the, in the two places, so I, I kind of do the bridge. But coming back to bonding curves, this is a way in which we can fund uh, communities by um, allowing every, everyone that wants to donate at the beginning um, fund uh, that pool. And later on, uh, when we have started that, um, uh, actually this is um, a graph that uh, relates the supply that we have and the price of the tokens that we are offering. That tokens that are uh, being staked. Please stop me if, if there is something that you don't understand because maybe I am uh, just missing things, okay? Uh, that's the price and that's the, the supply of the tokens. So if there are not much people having tokens, the price is low. And if there is a lot of people, then uh, issuing new tokens is, is something that is going to cost much more. So this is a way in which we can fund organizations that allows people who were not in the beginning to have a stake on them. Uh, of course, the people in the beginning uh, have more, uh, it is easier for them to get a high stake because they have very low prices. Uh, in, the, in the tokens that govern the community. But at the end, somebody can 
uh, come and say, I am super fan of this community. I want to be part. Uh, I know that at the moment it's, it's hard to, ga to get uh, tokens, but I already saw that that community is uh, very good guys. I, I am going to donate and have some tokens to participate in the conviction voting. That's a little bit of the idea of the bonding curves applied in the in the system. And we are also uh, creating a, a game in which we are going to play with bonding curves, conviction voting, and all that stuff to see how we can fund commons uh, in a solar punk future uh, that it's, it's a game, right? So we can think and let, let our imagination uh, go and think about in a future that the, the oil is uh, scarce and we need to take care of our environment, how we can fund uh, initiatives that takes care of, of it. And we can begin now, actually. It's, it's just a, a mindset. And all the solar punk um, narrative is very good for that. Maybe for those who are not um, familiar with that, it's like cyberpunk, because it's a future uh, full with, uh, with a lot of technology. But instead of being uh, depressed because the future is going to be so bad because uh, the cities are going to be so big and uh, Blade Runner and all that stuff. We can think on futures that are more integrated with nature and are more people is more engaged with each other and use technology in ways that connects them, but not in the way that we are connecting today, which are actually disconnecting, but really connecting and doing stuff together. And pretty much that project is uh, following that, that, that nar na narrative. And that's all. If, if you want to join one of those, uh, of those things, uh, I let here the links. Um, and thank you so much. <laughs>